All right, so here's an integral with an even power of a sine function. And my first intuition on this is, well, why don't we get a sine squared out of it and see what happens? So maybe I'll show you just one of the, one of the common dead ends here. So ask yourself, would it do any good to use a Pythagorean identity on this? And I strongly encourage you to just go down these pathways I think techniques of integration is just, so much about just relaxing and trying stuff and being open to the fact that you're going to hit dead ends. Uh, what did I accomplish there? Well, if I multiply these things through, I would get 1 minus 2 cosine squared x plus cosine to the fourth x. And then I'm kind of looking back on where I started and thinking to myself, I just, I'm in a worse situation now than I was before. This piece is exactly the same difficulty as what I started with and I have more stuff to deal with so this is a dead end maybe the universal symbol for dead end I don't know if that works um, so let's go back here and think more about this square of the sine function thing. Well, there is a way of making a square of a sine function a little bit simpler to integrate, and it's to use an identity. Sine squared x is 1 half, 1 minus cosine of 2x. The advantage being that we've knocked down the power of the trig function by 1. So like if I had an integral of sine squared x, Maybe I should have started with that simpler example, but if I had an integral of sine squared x, I would apply this and then each piece would be easy to integrate. So what happens if I do that to this integral? I'll get 1 half, 1 minus cosine 2x multiplied by another copy of the same thing, 1 half, 1 minus cosine 2x. And when I multiply the one halves, I get one fourth. And then inside the integral, I have to expand this by multiplying these binomials. So I'm using FOIL. I have one times one is one. Then I have minus cosine two x minus another cosine two x. So that's minus two cosine two x plus cosine squared two x dx. Okay, is this progress? Um, each of these pieces is simple to integrate. This piece is still not simple. So the square of a cosine is non-simple to integrate. I have to use an identity on that. So I'm going to use the related identity to this one. That cosine squared x is 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2x. So there are, there are times where the things that are in calculus textbooks I think are a little bit contrived because some of the problems in there and some of the formulas, they happen so rarely in real applications that you're probably never going to see one in a real, a real world context. These formulas are going to happen all the time when you're applying calculus to physical science or engineering. So I think these should really just be memorized. So let's apply this thing. Cosine squared of x is 1 half times 1 plus cosine of 2x. So this is going to be 1 half times 1 plus cosine of twice this angle, which is 4x. And then I'll wrap things up by guessing all the antiderivatives. So we'll just keep these guys as spectators for now. And then here I have a 1 half times 1 plus cosine 4x and I'm happy because I see a bunch of terms that are not so bad to integrate. Um, we'll just clean things up just a tiny bit more. I get a 1 half on this and if I add it to 1 I get 3 halves. So I have 1 fourth integral. 3 halves and then I have my cosine 2x term and then I have plus a 1 half 
cosine 4x dx. And again, you don't want to be stuck doing explicit u substitutions on terms that look like this. It's just gonna, it's overwhelming. It's just too much happening all at once. You're just looking at it like chain rule backwards. So I have one fourth. First term gives me a three halves x minus two times antiderivative of that guy um, if you want. Or you could in include the two and say, well, that looks like the derivative of the argument. Um, so I'm just going to say antiderivative of cosine 2x. Well, that's sine 2x, but with a one half in front. Last piece, antiderivative of cosine 4x. That's sine 4x, but with a one fourth in front, just to deal with the chain rule. And I could clean it up a little bit. I'm not going to invest too much in that. I end up with a 3 8 minus sine 2x plus 1 8 sine 4x plus c. All right, so um, maybe the book has a rule that says if you have an even power of the sine function, this is what you should do. Um, you can look at those flowcharts if you like, but I'm just not sure how helpful they are.